Gilg Ju, Gilg J, as Gilg Harris. As on show at Radio Vanning, the show that's in gold tie at their Clarny Gales, but while I'm sure you hold her. My name is Robert Green Goswell, Robert the Carslach. Have you ever heard tell of old Bobby Bob? And the name of this programme is Claire Nagale, in which you'll hear one part in the English language, as Angie Nishu Clash and Arnelia Sagilg, and in which you'll hear another part in the Manx Gaelic, Chinyan Amera, the mother tongue of Ellen Vanning, the Isle of Man. As Balach and Jurish. Uh, David Robertson gave us a lengthy quote about Peel Castle from Captain Francis Gross, who'd visited the island in 1774, 17 years before Robertson's return visit in 1791. Robertson now tells us he's going to quote the work of George Waldron, and this takes us on to a piece of history which has become, well, it's a bit Chinese whispers, it's become perhaps a bit distorted, not least thanks to one William Shakespeare. Ons Dracula to Arthur Homewood a chorsleden er Lucy Westenra, Rosh Mavis Fargal a coffin eg Ernest Scrothesis. Lord Janair to Nolu van Helsing, Lord Rish Arthur Machion and Tre Hjarne Arthur Lesniart Garu, her Sulvai Lucy, Trevi Briach J de Chorpegi. We start with a tune known here as Come Shan on Riche and used to accompany a dance, but that's one of Dr. John Clegg's translations of the lyrics in English, Keep the Old Petticoat Warm, which Paddy Tunney sings for us. Tashu Geishach Rish Radio Vanning, Stashu the Nashun, Miss Guller and Scalia by Dulish Alan Vanning. As I was going into the fair of a tie, I saw an old petticoat hanging up high. I took off my trousers and hung them up now to keep that old petticoat warm. The road to the out to the old lady, the little 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 dumpy little. The road to the out to the old lady, the little 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 do dum. The road to the out to the old lady, the little 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 do do dum. The little 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 dumpy little 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 dum. The road to the out to the old lady, the The petticoat fluttered and made a loud noise. It flapped and it flounced and lost feminine poise, and all round the flounces it dropped my cold rise. Old trousers, I hope you're in for 'em. The right to the out to the out to the middle, the little 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 the night of the wedding there was a big son. The father he's dead, he was shot with a gun, and the neighbours maintained was no harm. The out the day out the day out the day the day the day the day um put the out the day um put out the day out the day out the day the day out the day out the day the day um out the day out the day out the day 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 Paddy Tunney, whose parents were from adjoining farms, but one was in County Donegal and one was in County Fermanagh. Now let's look at David Robertson's quotation from George Waldron about the history of Peel Castle. It was in this castle, he says, that Eleanor, Duke, wife to Humphrey, Duke of Gloucester, uncle to King Henry VI and Lord Protector of England, was confined after being banished through the malice of the Duke of Suffolk and Cardinal of Winchester, who accused her of having been guilty of associating herself with wizards and witches, to know if her husband would ever attain the crown, and other treasonable practices. And so we look into the history of that. This is Eleanor Cobham, born in Surrey about 1400, who had been first the mistress and subsequently became the second wife to Humphrey, Duke of Gloucester. They kept a lively court, apparently, in Greenwich. Humphrey was the youngest son of Henry the Fourth of England. His elder brother became Henry the Fifth, and, as mentioned there, Humphrey was uncle to Henry the Sixth. But Henry the Sixth was only nine months old when Henry the Fifth died. So Humphrey, Duke of Gloucester, was, as it said, Lord Protector of England, and Lord Protector of the Young King, and a member of a ruling council. 
Ta fissem draw i dol i dwt da chor barant on om da bollach ag yn trae sian, son da chor barant ond slid ar achlid ta feimer tigelus. As ta mi sielt yn na velw, na bodw chor barant on om nis, er yn o na velw tigel ffos. As ffyddi da bi imad i cyrnelli a trae niam giri os da chor barant on om trae na bodw. As ffyddi na jinnw, as na gnaid yn dwt tigel ffos. Ach, hig yn trae as niw cwr sledd yn barant on am da bolach, as niw tigl mor da bech solus na greini a hyn sa'i sien na chrwyd. Eis niw cwr banach thorm, bai yn toiach gys yn gera, as dy lie hyn, as as lie fyr elia, as as lie a fyn wach gi a siwg mi geld yn dy gin yn sgoda. As dy jarw, dy jarw, bai'n sy'n dwt arthur, bai'n chri ega, nym cor barant o'n y dwns dy chwlio ach. Ta ffys em, as ta mi crel, dy fel cri fi wysled, as taw dy chara dy jac, as fau dy chara jyish. Ni yw mor bailt. A song now about a spinster, the old young woman, er hen berchetan, who's from Hendre, and she goes to the fair at Bala, and she meets Sean Price. Lavar, with a song about Erhen Verchetan from Hendre, who went to the fire to fire a bala, the fair at bala. 
Rhen yn olw creddl dy glen y sgôr na cwrt na ghe, mor dy bech e'r chi lort, ys ffi e'r y dwrt e. Fel cyd daw ffen ach fryd yn ach gyd. Son sigyrus. Fel ffysed dy rhen bynnaes y westen rha, chym na dwts olyw a chwt salt. Chanel, y boch fi'n, rhen mi rhywus mwn i'n er. Ys er yn o dy fel i eds dy bolych, ta cer dwt dy chor eis i mor salt. Salia mwst y chor cyd daw, dy liai peber yn y sgriw yn olyw yn un o lwsi. Creid mi, cyn eu pi cer ys eu fys em gyn o'r, ta o'r em, ys rysien bi sigr er, un ach ish cordeil. Ta dylio em ys o'n sio, gaw mi y dros mor aw ffysain dyr aw olyw liats, na gyn ach law diori bent yn rhyw, na gyn ach sŵl diori gyn er ffoglyn ys stiachs yn anamek. Nym freilad, my fys cyd ar sen, chybychiad e i rwsfag yn y ffos, ys nym freilad sawtio. Chybi ffogl yr bi caelt, ys ond tre cwy, nym corad rhys dwt. In 1435, Humphrey's elder brother, John, Duke of Bedford, died, and Henry VI was still only about 12 or 13 at that time. So, in the absence of other family, Humphrey, Duke of Gloucester, was now the heir presumptive to the throne. And, as well as being Lord Protector, he also sought the role of regent that had been held by his deceased brother, John. But the council didn't agree. Still, he was heir presumptive to the English throne, but by 1441 his wife Eleanor was anxious to know if he'd become king, so she went to two astrologers, Thomas Southwell and Roger Bolingbroke, and they predicted that Henry VI's life would be threatened by illness in July or August of 1441. Well, unfortunately, news of this prediction came to the ears of the king's guardians, and they too consulted astrologers. The young king himself had been alarmed by the prognostication, but was comforted by the new divination that there would be no such illness happening to him. So, that was all right, I suppose, but then things got very ugly.
That's the sound of King Hjoli and more of King Hjoli later on. Stashun and Ashun to Radio Vanning as on short as you gaze a Chris Clare and Gale. She Robert Cutting Carsel Mish or Robert Carslach. Did the other here tell a foul Bobby Bob? As they are on course you once Cullion Reach, the well Clare and Gale master, heeding the podcast and with Jint Radio Vanning as with the Gadden Nasty. For this you course Jack, Ernan Son, through the Nadega Radio Vanning Heen, the true Dun Reich Yer the Yow Velshem, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Audible, Spotify, Google Podcasts, tune in, na Alexa. As Nan Jeruchu the Velkerd you ace Jack Rish, Rish Palchevis Erna Scaly Magic Radio Vanning through Dun Kraman Er Agert, Ernan Nadega Radio Vanning, as Shen Rish Jacht Lai looked out ve Ernan Scaly Mach Hoyacht. Now, the king's guardians went looking for the astrologers who predicted serious illness, and they arrested Southwell and Bolingbroke for what they called treasonable necromancy. And Bolingbroke named Eleanor as the person who consulted them, so she fled to take sanctuary in Westminster Abbey so that she couldn't be tried in a court of law. It's likely enough that the charges were exaggerated to either deter Humphrey Duke of Gloucester, if not to completely break his power. Eleanor was examined by a panel uh, of uh, people in in sanctuary and denied most of the charges, but did admit to t- getting potions from a woman reputed to be a witch, and that was to help her conceive. She said, "Well, the upshot was all involved in uh, uh, the upshot was that all involved in any way were found guilty." Southwell died in the Tower of London, no doubt through ill treatment. Bolingbroke was hanged, drawn, and quartered. And the woman from whom Eleanor got her potions, she was called Marjorie Jordemain, was burnt at the stake as a witch. Eleanor herself had to do public penance in London. She had to divorce Duke Humphrey, and she was condemned to life imprisonment. She read Dolly Tammy Bryach Jidach. Gin away na gin, Ashley Lucy. Lord Arthur Mac de Creole, rare Hian Hummer. Mu er li van Helsing, ta kid ed jinu mur bait, tammy genachten lorish grey shod of el me jinu shen yenach mwerni ner kunta my jay. Ha jinum burra ort lesh fashion der a hagen tre kui. Hias a shan allu sus as dorte de throm kushach as tau kart. Be peen on I nul you. A chene peen inrachen vis on, chamu bein peen shaw and fers jerry. Be fe morren as ortsnes as ortsnes moon all you mail ye been, castna trud ustia gort rosh mavishin rostia and ustia millish. Ach, signed on ve dunnel sacri as now sondach, as kulina kurmine as be all you the mai. Ren me cadler er eishach on shamer Arthur and the shen, a jach van Helsing the liar er be. Haya huggers vai mor de beche frelara me girten tai. Now this is the lament of an exile from Brittany, Guez an Aliad, written by Yuan Guernig and sung by Andrea Arguil.
and Aliad, the exile's lament. And we'll hear from Andrea Gouil's daughter later on, in fact. Gerawi ryu a shilia jain chamer, anji va lusi na lai sa chofinec, skelt herish lech blein na gar lied fai, ren skel yena, trud sor a lily as a rose, ra strosha ma gheran li. Lior la mina hakar, a nala is feed main fower. Sir Train gaz Exeter, Jonathan na chadla. Te jain the veach javan and trailers chai jint. Ach na yai cre ward edder and tre shen, uns whitby is ulu and tail roam, Jonathan na rsul gin nyach er bj. As nish, pustris Jonathan. Jonathan na horner, na fartius, burchach, meisher a choluch. My Hawkins marrow was on luggage, as Jonathan as te meliegas for the the jinny other day, adi day. Lenyach for the the jinny briach jimachon shaw. Screw cheese for solu. Tammy as cleachter lash a screw yerem. Chich ernevis jintain lurish birches now yerkit. Maso for the beach I my the lure of yoke rish. Les Rutus and Shenazulio. Well, let's go back to what George Waldron has to say about this. Sir John Stanley, then Lord of Man, had the charge of Eleanor, and having conducted her to the island, placed her in this castle, this is Peel Castle, where she lived in a manner befitting her dignity, nothing but liberty being refused. She appeared, however, so turbulent and impatient under this confinement that he was obliged to keep a guard over her not only because there were daily attempts made to get her away, but also to prevent her laying violent hands on her own life. They tell you that ever since her death to this hour a person is heard to go up the stone stairs of one of these little houses on the walls, constantly every night as soon as the clock has struck twelve. But I never heard anyone say they had seen what it was, though the general conjecture is that it's no other than the troubled spirit of this lady." who died as she'd lived, dissatisfied and murmuring at her fate. Well, a grand story, but is it right? Now we heard Tom Alexander playing his accordion last time, the second attempt as it was. Here he's joined by Brother Jack with a song by James Scott Skinner, The Bonnie Lass of Bon Accord. This lass of Bon Accord She's the special girl we dream of every day And now we pledge with Bon Accord Her precious love we never will betray So raise your glass and say Slangy and we'll drink to the 
the girl we love the most. Raise your glass of wine to mine, and the last of one o'clock will be our toast. This love of yours is just like mine. No lass could be as beautiful as she. If she is the one your heart adores, then your lass of one accord she'll always be. So raise your glass and say slight you are, and we'll drink to the girl we love the most. Raise your glass of wine to mine. And the last of one accord will be our toast. James Scott Skinner wrote that song in 1984 about Wilhelmina Bell, known like our Mrs. Harker in Dracula as Mina, and that was Tom and Jack, the Alexander brothers, singing it. Well, William Shakespeare gives Eleanor fine speeches in Henry VI Part Two, and Sir John Stanley has a speaking role too. A sheriff says, Sir John Stanley is appointed now to take her with him to the Isle of Man. And Eleanor says, Stanley, I prithee, go and take me hence. I care not whither, for I beg no favour. Only convey me where thou art commanded. Why, madam, says Stanley, that is the Isle of Man, there to be used according to your state. That's bad enough, says the Duchess, meaning her state is bad enough. That's bad enough, for I am but reproach, and shall I then be used reproachfully? But Stanley assures her, like to a duchess and Duke Humphrey's lady, according to that state you shall be used. Now perhaps Walden took his cue from Shakespeare. In fact, Eleanor was imprisoned in Chester Castle from 1442 to 1443, in Kenilworth Castle from 43 to 46. She was in Peel Castle, but only from uh, 1446 to 1449, and then she was moved to Beaumaris Castle in Anglesey, where she died in 1452. Van Sierweis fin jou kramp as fietroom goesach. Grau ach sin hien as na sjarwenten aan sien, aan sien. Sian gare na gege as Exeter, a jinta gege ons lonning, as dun je ser as lie in rieger a John Paxton, echt er een sjezer ko vestig an lai. But Jonathan as mischen in sjadu laur a lau. As jenny sin de raun in gare sjer, a smooth een, en ol boin. Hengshin back as a valley of the cune, gold er bruskus corneal perk hide. But Jonathan smun in the bech is simoil thou gold stiach so roar is tamult, mas o heishin shis, ach, her au veg ach cus beg the lion shen, as ve jean the ve rear trimshach for den ach eil as frag in quildin care follum von, hug e orin smun in er a care follum stai. Mas o jirishin as hulshin shis piccadilly. For Jonathan Goyle Graham Jean Erma Rai, and Acht Yenachay on Shan Len Rosh Majach Migaskol.
Cornish hammered dulcimer player Carenza with a piece known as Michael Turner's Waltz. Uh, Michael Turner, I think, was from Sussex. Uh, but actually, the tune was published in 1788 by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. It's KV 536, the second of his six German dances. <laughs> Show you station the national machine the grey the jar of radio vanning. Listen, show she Claire Nigel was for clash and cartnish. Madam Pin Robert Dean Carswell Robert the Carslach. I've heard tell of our Bobby Bob. Jane, me drawy fin yow hiat. Erin on the vodu tanacht and wish cuse the blinton, lash insig a etiquette as decorum de nin and elia, gin the min rail and star jay, grey moor beggin. Ach, she Jonathan Vaughan, as e mo un ye shesha. As her ow en er peg a be ren fragin shin, as begummelin de renad, ma so ren shin shul roin. Van me gin er ben eg fir elen, un zed vur mar quil gart, van a sai uns Victoria chow mui je shap Giuliano, tre deni me Jonathan grema marai chut chon, de ren e gorta gemi. As durte de follets and en lega, my ye. Tammy him neck the kinjach me on Jonathan, er no the vel me goil al the gin tame nere gach enya cor burra ersen reish. Ma so hin de me de de tavi, was vry me jay in the vaughn ve cor burra er. Ve fi glass, as ve gin the round a sully nega buch a mach, mor de lye on zachim as de lye on zindus. Now, Eleanor's story appears in 1896 in Manx National Songs as Lament of the Duchess of Gloucester, with lyrics by A. P. Graves. Under the title it says, The Crime and Penance of, Elizabeth, of Eleanor Cobham, Duchess of Gloucester, 1441, is a matter of history. Her banishment to the Isle of Man is related in Shakespeare's Henry VI. The tradition of her banishment and her imprisonment in Peel Castle rests on grounds which are by some considered insufficient. Now, these are the first two verses of the song as written by A.P. Graves. I once was a duchess of honour and fame, my lord, good Duke Humphrey of Gloucester by name. Fair Ellen, fair Ellen, the pride of ladies all, in court and in city the folk did me call. But our gold sun declining, with shameful rebuke they imprisoned and butchered my good royal duke, and witchcraft I practised to spill their life-blood who Humphrey of Gloucester did kill. Now this suggests that she was seeking revenge for the murder of her husband Humphrey, but is that right? Well, off to the liberties in Dublin now, where Kevin Cunniff describes the pride of Pimlico. Come all you broken-hearted ones, and listen to me lay About a lovely damsel as fair as any may Who's caused much tears and sorrow And grief and heartfelt woe It's Kitty Quinn I'm speaking of The pride of Pimlico It's just about a month ago And to this place she came And sent her heart all blazing up In love's undying flame And made of every other lass About the place a foe Because she took their sweethearts Did the pride of Pimbley go Poor Paddy Burke the tailor Now he can't do a stroke of work Nor Billy she the handyman Nor steady Jack McGurk and if you ask the reason, all they'll answer you is, Oh, it's all because of Kitty Quinn, the pride of Pimbley Co. And Murphy the teetotaler, he has gone upon the spree. And Kyo the whiskey drinker, now he's drinking milk and tea. He's given up the Jemison, likewise the power and grow. Because his heart's distracted, be the pride of Pimbley Co. 
And even came the miser that no one could get round And young Tom Ray who owns the forge near a hundred pound And Matt McCann whose father keeps the Irish waxwork show A raven night and day about the bride of Pimbley Co Well it's time the police saw to it or it soon will be too late Or divil a man in all the coom will have a solid pate or soon beyond then Ridley's all a sight of awful woe You'll see ten thousand victims of the pride of Pimbley Co Kevin Cunniff and a song about Kitty Quinn, the pride of Pimlico. And that was written by Arthur Griffith, the newspaper man and in 1905 founder of Sinn Féin. Now, Eleanor's trial and sentence came in 1441 for being involved in what was described as treasonable necromancy regarding the life of Henry VI. Humphrey, Duke of Gloucester, wasn't a party to that, though many resented him because of his position of power in association with his nephew the King. Six years later, though it was, in 1447 that he was arrested for treason, whatever the strength of that charge was, but three days later he was found dead. Now, some said that this was through poisoning. But certainly that's rather than being butchered back in 1441, as suggested in A.P. Graves' lyrics, where, as we heard, imprisoned and butchered my good royal duke. So that's what A.P. Graves made of it. However, A.P. Graves continues with Eleanor's story now. But of black arts convicted, down each London street, they made me do penance, enwrapped in a sheet. Barefooted, bareheaded, a taper in hand, the like ne'er did a lady before in the land. Break sad heart, and perish, here ends not my pain. My sentence, a captive for life to remain. In Mona, lone Mona, long years I've lain bound, where the desolate sea smites my dungeon profound. Rene Blake er dunya liawr shang, le stroin mor gob as far wheel do as fezeg birach ege, va goil taast in yis je nyin wech. Ge jian ve jian ori, nach rene fag in den yis jian, as ma so va shilia mai em er. Ge ne jesh va ne den ege, ve krai as jowl as solirach, as van a fieglen moor a ben ege, as for the figle as for figle and moor a ben egger, the gian ear and a spanner, er no the round the mail and egger for jerk, the gibbach gorusen neck bech. Drail Jonathan Rish Blake air, there of a me fo al the ginnache goil tas the jay. For al em the ginnache goil the hulk jay. Gamaleshel for al em the ginnache goil the hulk jay, as a gian for fergach as grainer. For I'm J. Jonathan and Orve Burrich, as Dregere, as they G and the Rowy Smunny and the Rauquish Fissem, Machiona Hushes Vega. Novello Fag and Quaiton? Chanel been, dort me, Chanel en the mare, Quaiton. Te G and the Duggan and Surega, Grain Dow, as Corer Crowmy. Son Dorte, Mart, no Berg Fissega, the Rowy Mish, Mina, Velorish. Now we heard Andrea Arguil earlier, and this is her daughter Nolwen Corbell, with a curious little piece. It's in Breton, but it's about a young Native American called Yakari.
Nolwen Corbell, with a song in Breton but about a young Native American, produced, I think, as a fundraiser for an educational project for children, Rêve de Goss. Skronel veit er ouwe bocht mi'n aglitjaas, roosrid yn ach, aglitjaas de moor. Ta mi creel er nonna der ouwe misjer bei ege, de je laai er as de chumbo suse heen, de beige er sin keel schies. Hanier lech blege. Hank dun je maag as en schap lech min jeeg beg, as hugge i den ven eeg, ren imman er schulech. And the final verse now by A.P. Gray's Ring out, ye wild seabirds, my knell to the skies. Outworn with her sorrows, here Eleanor dies. Receive her, receive her kind earth to thy breast. A poor banished lady at last hath found rest. But again, whilst it makes a fine tale, we know that she'd left the island in 1449 and she in fact died three years later, in the Isle of Mona certainly, but in this case, Anismon, or Anglesey, where Beaumaris Castle stands. Now, from this Thursday afternoon, the 11th of May at 3 o'clock, registration is open for the language and society in the Isle of Man. You can go online and do it pre- before then as well. It's the conference at the Eye Museum in Kingswood Grove in Douglas, and registration and participation is completely free. You can register for the conference in person or through Eventbrite. And if you can't attend in person, you can register to participate by Zoom. Now, this is the initiative of conference chairman Dr. Chris Lewin, who you heard in Gullus Gagan. And it's through the the University of Galway in association with Manx National Heritage and after the Thursday evening it'll run throughout Friday and Saturday the 12th and 13th of May. In just a few minutes we join Dave Moore for the Sunday chill out from 7 to 9 o'clock and at 9 Judith Lay opens up the late night listening lounge for sundown through into Monday morning. We close with King Shirley again, but keeping it in the family because they're playing tunes by my son Gil now. Until the next time then, this is Robert Cutting Carl, Robert Carslach. Old Bobby Bob. Wishing you a very good night, Eve. I'm a chrieriu as or as me yearian shed you, will you? <laughs> <laughs>